divine and incredibly dynamic spirit of Dr. Jeanine Bowen. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Before I begin, I want to talk to you about the Affiliated New Thought Network. ANTN.org is an amazing organization. I've been a member for 30 years. And what's great about you can be an individual member or a group member, and they support you in everything from personal spiritual growth and development with mentorship to financial support if required. They have a teaching arm, which is Emerson Theological Institute of which I am the liaison. And that is a specified course of study. If you want to go on and get more credentials, you want to become a minister or you want to become a, uh, uh, you call them prayer chaplains here. If you want to become a practitioner, you can do so. Check out antin.org, A-N-T-N.org, okay? In the book, The Basic Principles of Science of Mind by Frederick Bales, which he wrote in 1985, we read, there's a power within you. It can lift your life to its highest level. It can change illness into health. It can bring peace amidst turmoil. It can bring success out of failure and victory out of defeat. It can bring companionship and happiness out of loneliness, this power will respond to you because this power is within you. Faith is a superpower. Faith is a superpower. In the glossary of the Science of Mind textbook, Ernest Holmes says, faith is an attitude that's so inwardly embodied that the mind can no longer deny it. And the classic definition of faith is given in the book of Hebrews in the Bible, it's kind of cryptic, but it's really beautiful. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, not yet seen. So faith is actually the substance of things hoped for. Substance means that which stands under. So faith then is the substance or that which stands under all of manifestation. Faith is substance, it is omnipresent substance that has the capacity to take form or to hold into readiness all the good of which we can ever conceive or become conscious. So faith is the bridge between the invisible realm of spirit and the manifest universe. Now understood in this light, faith is the quality which enables us to look past appearances, past of what's ever going on, in your life and affairs, any kind of lack or limitation or difficulty, and to take hold of an idea, a new thought, get a new thought, and to hold on to it, even though you may not see any evidence at all of it in the human experience. So we have the ability to affect the outcome of our reality through faith. This has been now proven with quantum science. And I'll tell you, at the Affiliated New Thought Network last week, I was in uh, Unity Village, Missouri, which is just the most incredible sacred space, Unity Village. Dr. James Mellon spoke about quantum physics and talk about stretching your brain. It was really exciting. And so quantum science delves into the physical properties that explains the behavior of subatomic particles and atoms and molecules. It starts with the principle that everything is energy. Everything is energy. And energy condenses into matter. And so from an energetic standpoint, whatever we place our attention on grows stronger in our life. Now they've proven this scientifically. Now biologically speaking, we each have a RAC. It's a reticular activating system. And these are a set of connected nuclei in our brains that are responsible for searching in our environment for what we are placing our attention upon and filtering out everything else. Fascinating, isn't that? So then what's known as the law of attraction or the law of the circle, scientifically is called sympathetic resonance. See, isn't that, see, it was called religious science back in the day because they wanted science to prove religion. And the day has come that it's done so with quantum physics. So everything is energy and everything comes down to energy. A great example is taking similar 
guitar strings with harmonic likeness. And if you pluck one of them, the one that you pluck will vibrate. And then the ones close by will also begin to vibrate due to the resonant energy. This is because both strings have this resonant frequencies and the active vibration of one string's movement induces a vibration in the second or other latent strings by the phenomenon of resonance, symphonic resonance. And so it's the same thing with our emotions. Our emotions contain signature energetic vibrations as with everything else. And that's why I say faith is a superpower because our focus and our faith will dictate our reality. And so we can shape our reality by practicing and amplifying a consistent signature energetic vibration of that which we want to create. And because everything is energy, our vibration creates this sympathetic resonance. This then activates the energetic vibrations of anything that resonates to our vibration. And then remember with the RAC, it filters out everything unlike it. So then the question becomes regarding faith, it's like a measuring cup that we hold out to the universe. And remember Louise Hay said that? You could take a thimble or you could take a bucket or you could take a wheelbarrow. And so we can never experience a good which is beyond our capacity to conceive. We receive what our faith expects. And so it behooves ourselves to ask what, kind, what size container are we taking to the universe? How much are we willing to accept and receive? Now in the New Testament, Jesus gave a really good explanation of, the, of how this law of faith operates. And he said, according to your faith, be it done unto you, according to your faith, whether it's your faith in God, your faith in yourself, your faith in your goal, your faith in your ability, this is how we get results and how results are measured. Now, it's important to know that faith is an innate faculty. Faith is not something you have to learn or earn or get. Everybody has faith, but it's like a muscle. It needs to be exercised. And faith doesn't come all at once. It, it must grow. It must be encouraged. It must be nurtured. So how do we do this? It starts with learning about the nature of creator God, creator God, creator of all that is, creator of God. This power is everywhere presence. It's all power. It's all action. It's all knowing. It expresses in us and as us. I am this power. Say that with me. I am this power. And so once we've established this awareness and this knowledge and this understanding, then when we move through challenging circumstances, all we need to do is call out this amazing power of creator God. We can just call it out and that power can do anything. I had a recent experience I'd like to share with you where I called out my faith. I was at the Huntington Lighthouse Musical Festival where I live on the North Shore of Long Island here. It's the only musical festival in the world that's held on the top of a working lighthouse in the middle of the water. It's been estimated that there were 1,700 boats at the festival. Well, there I was, and uh, I had some guests on my boat, some in particular one very big guest on my boat. And I was tied up to another boat that had 10 people, and they all decided to come on my boat without permission, by the way, which is a real no-no, permission to board captain, not granted, but they came aboard my vessel. And because mine was bigger, my boat was bigger, and I had a table that you could rest all the good. Everybody brought really good food. That was a lot of people have on my boat. There was a lot of weight on my boat. And I had two big Yeti coolers in the back. One was mine. Somebody bought mine. And they were in front of the scuppers. You're familiar with a scupper? A scupper is a, a device that in the back of the boat. And it's a, an opening which allows the water to come in out of the boat of the vessel. Now, there were two ladies who were nonchalantly hanging out in my cabin chatting. And they suddenly called out with panic in their voices, there's water in the cabin. So I looked and there was about five inches of water in my cabin. Five, that's a lot of water. If you don't know anything about building, that's a lot of water. And so I was like, I was like, we were sinking. I mean, we were really sinking.
thinking. So I immediately go, Cody, that's creative. All that is, that's what I call God. Cody, you got to do something now to make everything right. Please get me out of this mess. There's only divine order and divine right action. Now that you say within a millisecond, you know, but I become very aware of the presence of God. And so I immediately try and get these people off my boat. Some of them are a little schnocker, not easy to get them off. And I'm like, we're sinking. <laughs> got to get it off. And then I started the engines, the engine started. And then I knew, I was like, thank you, God. That was, thank you, creator, God. Because once the engine started, I knew that we were going to be okay. We were still sinking, but we were going to be okay. So I pulled out, I had a hand bilge pump. I had a couple of uh, buckets and I'm very safety. I'm a vessel safety examiner. So I'm very safety oriented. People don't realize that boating is really dangerous. Then I checked my bilge pumps. I have three bilge pumps of which zero were working. The fuses had fried for some reason and they were cooked, they literally cooked. So I had no bilge pumps. There was nothing keeping the water out of my vessel. So I decided I'm gonna text my brother and tell him I'm sinking. Jay, I'm sinking, I'm behind the catamaran west of the lighthouse. So I knew he'd find me, not really knowing what he could do. But a few minutes later he came by. And so I went up on the gunnel on the side of the boat to try to speak to him. And I really couldn't hear him. There's wind, there's music, there's people, there's 1,700 boats. And he's talking to me. And I don't know. But I'm standing up on the gunnel anyway, listening. And I, all of a sudden, a pump out boat comes along. I'm like, my eyes must have opened this wide. Do you hear what I just said? There were 1,700 <laughs> boats out there and one pump out boat. And that pump out boat came past my boat. And thank goodness I was standing on the gunnel when I was standing on the gunnel. Otherwise, I wouldn't have seen the pump out boat. And so he looks at me. I look at him. We don't even speak. We're like, he's going, I'm going, yes. <laughs> yes. And the people on the boat are shouting, no, no, they can't help us. I'm like, I'm the captain. Quiet, please. So everybody quieted down. He came and what the pump out boat is, they typically take out the waste out of your head or out of your galley. But what he did is he connected this hose with this big nozzle and I handed it to somebody. They pumped us out for at least 15 minutes. That's how much water was in my vessel, in the bottom of the, the vessel. And so we drained enough that I could safely get back to port where we successfully drained the, uh, the rest of the boat. And then of course my brilliant brother next day repaired one bilge and then the end of the week, a second bilge. And, I don't know about the third bilge. I'm, I'm just, my boat's floating and I'm a happy girl. Ah, it was that day that I realized that faith was a superpower. In that moment, I had taken so much time over the years. I've been, it's been 34 years now that I've been practicing practical spirituality. Taking that time and energy to strengthen and deepen your faith and your connection. And, and so when we call out our faith, it doesn't mean that there's not going to be changes in the life. I mean, the, my boat was sinking. It was literally sinking. But what, what we have to do is that, remember, change is just change. Our job can change. Our relationships can change. Our investments can change. Our work can change. Our whole reality changed a whole lot of ways these past couple of years. But it's not an indication that all is lost. It's not an indication that we're going to fall on hard times. If the spiritual truth is that our business, our employer, our investments, they can change. But creator God is unchanging and can never fail us. And so unless we're solid in our spiritual identity and knowing that creator God alone is the source of our good, we can become filled with despair when the shift happens. That's S-H-I-F-T, Joseph. <laughs> shift happens. And shift happens. So... But creator God never limits us. That's an important point. And so the more we immerse ourselves in reading and studying spiritual truth, who here just studies a little bit every day, reads New Thought Magazine or Science of My Magazine or Unity Magazine, this thing called you, you're doing that again? Read it in the first person. It says we read it in the first person. Very cool way to read that book. And so there's so many New Thought people. I just want to drop a few names here. Ernest Holmes to Wayne Dyer. Emma Curtis Hopkins, that you want to twist your brain, read some Emma Curtis Hopkins, to Catherine Ponder, to Louise Hay. But I encourage you to take time daily and feed your faith, reading spiritual materials. It's not just enough to pray and do affirmations and meditate. You want to bring your brain up to 
snuffed by doing spiritual reading. And so the more we do so, the more our faith will grow. Anybody can prove that faith is a superpower, anybody, by acting as if something is true and real before it actually is. Act as if. What often holds us back is fear. And fear is our ego's response to bumping up to the edge of what is known and familiar. You heard that book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway? I love that title, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And what's interesting is energetically, excitement and fear just feel the same way in your body. Think about that. If something's wonderful, we go, oh, that's so wonderful. And something's horrible, we go, oh, that's so horrible. So the energy is the same in the body. And so feel the fear and do it anyway. And so the ego is terrified of the unknown because the unknown might not be safe. I'm thinking I want to get a bigger boat. Well, if I sell my boat, what if I don't have a boat? In my... Those are the negative thoughts that come up and keep us in bondage. But fear comes from the protective part of the mind, from the amygdala that will tell us anything to keep us moving into potentially unsafe territory. The, the ego mind protects us. And so whenever we're contemplating moving out of our comfort zone, in other words, moving into the unknown, we're gonna feel fear. We're simply hardwired that way. And creator God made it that way so that ultimately we would be protecting ourselves and would be safe. So the question becomes then, are we going to allow fear to paralyze us? Because if we buy into fear, we're done. You buy into fear and you just crash and burn in a big way. So the biggest block to faith is worry. Worrying about circumstances and the bad things that can happen. It's amazing. It's like, it's like a snowball on a hill. It rolls down. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's what happens when you entertain a negative thought. It just gets bigger and bigger and you start speculating about the worst that could go wrong. And the word fear is, is an acronym for, I love this one, forgetting everything's all right. Isn't that a great? Fear, forgetting everything's all right. Or the one that I'm sure most of us know is false evidence appearing real. Because the basis of most fear is false information. Have you ever studied the work of Byron Katie? And she questions everything. Is it really, really true? And a lot of times it's not really true, but our mind has made up these thoughts. We fear the uh, unknown, the unfamiliar past failures and bad outcomes instead of focusing on the present reality. We have danger, rejection, change, even success. There's so many things we can fear or we can step into faith and realize that faith truly is our superpower. Fear is misusing our creative power of thought and our creative power of visualization. In the Bible, uh, Job, it was Job who said, for the thing that I fear most has come upon me. Why? Because when we worry, we vividly picture in our mind the undesirable condition that we worry about. Fear and anxiety. We visualize it. And that's what Job did. And then this blocks the way of manifesting our good. And this is the way the mind works. So it's up to us to take the time daily. Take the time daily. You know, I've come to realize, I spoke with Susan Reeves this morning, that the most important thing we can ever do in this life is practicing self-care, taking care of ourselves, spiritually, mentally, emotionally and physically. Actually, I spoke about that here at the beginning of the year now that I think about it. It's the most important thing we can do. And when we do that, everything falls into place. And then we begin walking in the kingdom. Walking in the kingdom is consciously walking and being aware. Being aware that you are a being of light and love. Being aware that you are a light worker. Being aware that wherever you go and whatever you are doing, your consciousness through quantum physics is directing and manifesting your life experience. So I call upon you today to remember that faith is your superpower. Let's do some affirmations, okay? Faith is my superpower. Faith is my superpower. I have insurmountable faith. In the highest and best outcome of every situation in my life, I am divinely guided 
in all ways. Always. Always. And so it is. And so, so begins your lessons. Thank you for having me.